This is the final chapter of the steel hull loading tutorial. In this video, we will create horizontal wind loads using load transfer surfaces. Before we apply the horizontal loads, we have to create lines to close open cells such as the gates of the hall. This step is necessary so that RFEM recognizes them as closed cells and thus loads them accordingly. We click on New Line, and then click on the column bases of the gable columns one after the other. By right-clicking on each column base, we confirm the entered line and repeat the process for the second gate. A new and very helpful function in RFEM 6 is the load transfer surface. In addition to the load wizards, there is an approach using the load transfer surfaces to simply generate loads in RFEM 6. We create a surface here using the load transfer stiffness type. A new surface without stiffness and without thickness is created which is a unique function for load transfer. This surface has no structural effect, and it can be used to consider loads from surfaces that have not been modeled. We open the submenu of the surfaces and click on Select Boundary. In the new dialog box, we select the Load Transfer Stiffness Type. All properties are now grayed out as they are irrelevant for the selected stiffness type. In the Load Transfer tab, we select both directions and click OK to insert the new surfaces. To insert new surfaces, we have to select the boundary lines of the respective surface. If a boundary line consists of several members, we have to click them one by one. As soon as all boundary lines of a surface have been selected, the surface is created. We repeat this process for all lateral surfaces of the steel hull. We can also use the wireframe view to select the lines more easily. As soon as we have inserted the two lateral surfaces, we can save time by holding down the control key to drag and drop them to the other side. We have inserted all the load distribution surfaces now. By right-clicking a surface, we can also display the local coordinate systems. We can also invert individual coordinate systems by right-clicking, as shown here. We can customize the properties of the load distribution surfaces. For example, we can apply the load distribution of the lateral surfaces to the purlins completely. To do this, we select all the desired surfaces while holding down the control key and edit them with by double clicking. In the load transfer tab, we select the Y direction and confirm the entry by clicking OK. In addition, we can exclude individual members from the load distribution. To do this, we edit the respective surfaces again and select the desired members on the structural model in the Remove Influence from area in the Load Transfer tab. Thus, it is defined which components on the steel hull are affected by the load transfer. Now, let's set the wind load in the X direction by clicking the New Surface Load button. In the new dialog box, we select the correct load case from the list and enter the load properties. Then, we click OK to apply the load. We select the surfaces on which the wind load is to act in the X direction and confirm the input.
We can also change individual loads later by double clicking them, as shown here. We repeat this process for the Y direction as well. In our example, we have entered the wind loads for the roof and the sides of the steel hull in separate load cases. In practice, however, these loads act together from the same directions. We can also consider this an interaction of load cases. To do this, we select the lateral wind loads in the navigator and add them by right-clicking on the respective automatically generated wind loads of the roof. One very important aspect of member structures is that they ensure structural stability. Due to the loading of the steel hull, the stiffening bracings can receive compressive forces. Since these are tension members, they fail automatically as soon as they have to absorb compressive forces. There are several ways to avoid this instability. One way is to activate the Exceptional Handling option in the Reactivation tab of the Static Analysis settings. This option allows you to remove failing members one by one until structural stability has been established. Alternatively, you can assign a very low stiffness to the failing members. Another option is to apply pre-stress to the tension members. As a result, Tensile forces act constantly on the stiffening members and thus prevent failure due to compressive forces. To do this, we first create the load case, pre-stress, and insert a load on the tension members using an axial displacement. We can select all bracings quickly by using the visibilities. We have now ensured that no instabilities will occur during the calculation. This was the final chapter about the loading of our structural analysis model. Now you have a comprehensive overview of the load cases, actions, combinations, and loads in RFEM 6. Let's start the calculation in the next video. Till next time.